Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to be talking about crafting geometric shapes using Adobe Illustrator. This version we're going to be using is Adobe Illustrator 2020, but generally this applies to anything from 2018 going forward. Geometric shapes tends to be one of Illustrator's strong points as you can craft complex shapes with just the click of a button or just the move of a mouse. There are some subtleties to it that are worth going over, so we're going to do that right now. Let's get started with it, shall we? Before we get started, notice that we're using the Essentials layout, and under View, we've got Smart Guides selected. The first way is we click on a rectangle tool, and then click anywhere on our page. If we know the dimensions of our square, all we need to do is enter it. For this purpose, let's make a square that's 100 points wide and 100 points tall. That's easy enough right there. Another way to make a square is by clicking and dragging. When we click and drag, we'll hold on to our shift key. That allows all the dimensions to match. So we'll hold our shift key down, we'll click and drag and we can arrive at our shape. Clicking and dragging is the way to go if you don't know the exact size of your shape, but you've got an approximate width. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a rectangle. We click and drag to, a, to our approximate width. This one's 150 points wide by 100 points tall, so we're going to drag out to an approximate width. One hitch about clicking and dragging is it's really difficult to get an exact measurement. Reason is, is because clicking and dragging measures in one hundredths of a point. So if we delete that, we can also click and release and enter in our dimensions exactly. In this case, it's going to be 150 points by 100 points. We'll click and drag that into place. Now we're looking at a rounded rectangle. There are a couple ways to do a rounded rectangle. The first way is just to continue using our rectangle tool. I'll click and release. I know my dimensions are 100 point by 100 points. I'll move this up right next to the others. And then what we can do is we can grab our direct select tool. Notice when we grab our direct select tool, we've got our bevel points directly beneath our anchor points. All we need to do is make sure that they're all selected, click and drag until we've got an approximate measurement. Notice a weakness about this is clicking and dragging is very difficult to be precise because measurements occur in one hundredths of a point. It's a great way to approximate. So that's one way to do it. Again, using your rectangle tool, then using your direct select to click and drag the corners in. If we want an exact measurement, we can click and hold on our rectangle tool. We can drag down to our rounded rectangle tool. From there, all we need to do is click, and we can enter in the exact dimensions, 100 points wide by 100 points tall by 20 point corner radius. There you go right there. We can also do this with rectangles. Next, we've got our ellipses. We click and hold on to our rectangle tool, and we select our ellipse tool. You can also press L on the keyboard and it will bring up your ellipse tool. If you hold on to the shift key and you can click and drag, you can always get a perfect circle. Again, shift key helps you get a perfect circle. Like with rectangles, one drawback of clicking and dragging is it's really tough to get a precise measurement. Again, because we measure in one hundredths of a point. However, if you know the exact dimensions of your ellipse, all you need to do is click and release and then you can enter in the exact size, in this case 100 points by 100 points. We'll take our circle, put it back in place. Next we've got our ellipse. You can start at the top left corner and drag until you've got the approximate size. Notice clicking and dragging's weakness is you can't get exact measurements. If you know the exact measurements, again all you need to do is click and release and enter in your exact dimensions. 150 by 100. Click and drag that into place. One note worth mentioning is that if you hold your Alt key down, you're going to grow your ellipse from the center. The same thing holds true for squares. So if I click and hold, notice that we're creating from the middle. If we hold our Shift key down, we're going to build a circle from the middle. Let's move on to polygons. Again, click and hold, and let's select polygons. 
By default, polygons are going to be six-sided. So if we click anywhere on our screen, you'll notice a 50-point radius by six sides. In this case, let's start with the triangle. We're going to change it to three sides, and we'll click OK. If you want to approximate your polygon size, all you need to do is click and drag. You can always press your shift key to make it horizontally or vertically aligned. We'll click and release, and we'll go from there. If we click anywhere on our screen again, let's make it six-sided. We'll click and release, and we'll change our sides to six, and we'll make our radius once again 50. Once we've made that size, all we need to do is click OK, and we've got our hexagon. We can also click and drag and get similar results. Again, holding our shift key to make it perfectly horizontal or vertical. We'll approximate that size. It's very difficult to get it just right, but that's one way to do it. Next, we're going to look at our star tool. We're going to click and hold on our polygon tool. We'll drag down to our star tool. Stars operate a little bit differently from polygons, ellipses, and rectangles in that they've got two separate radiuses. You've got radius one, the inner radius, and then you've got the external radius, the outside radius, which is radius two. The default dimensions for a star is 25 points by 50 points. Let's keep it that way for now, and let's create our first star. All we did, again, was we clicked and released on our screen, and we created our star. If we want to turn it upside down or we want to change it to an upright pointing star, we'll delete this. We'll click on our screen again, and we'll change our radiuses to 50 points on radius 1 and 25 points on radius 2. You can also click and drag, and if you hold the shift key down, it'll orient horizontally or vertically, and you can get that approximate size as well. One note is that for stars, the Alt key keeps the star in a consistent base shape based on radius 1. So if we click and drag, watch what happens. It snaps to a standard shape. Let's build a 12-point radius. We'll click and release, and I'll add 12 points to our points. And then I'll change our radius from radius 1 will be 50 points, Radius 2 will be 10 points. If we click and release or we click OK, we get the shape that we want. Now, if we want to approximate, if we want to approximate that size, because we've already entered those specific dimensions, you can click and drag holding your Alt key until you've got radius 1 approximately how you want it. Then what you can do is you can release your Alt key and press your Control key, and that will change radius 2. Again, Control affects radius 2, Alt affects radius 1. Next thing I'll do is I'll hold my Shift key down along with my Control key to make sure it's perfectly horizontal or vertical, and then get to the size that I would like to do. That's about close enough right there. If we click and release, that's pretty tight. If we don't know the size of our star and we know the number of points, all we need to do is we can click anywhere on our screen, enter in the number of points. In this case, 12 is OK. We can then click anywhere on our screen, holding the Alt key, until we've got radius 1 approximately the same size of the star that we want to have. Once we've got that, we're going to release our Alt key and press on our Control key, and then we'll start affecting radius 2. To make it horizontal or vertical, we'll hold our Shift key down along with our Control key, and then we'll stretch our shape out to what we want to emulate. That's about right right there. We can also use our shape tool to create some pretty unique shapes. If you notice right over here, we've got sort of a wax droplet. The way we do that is pretty easy. Um, once again, we'll click and drag. We know we've got 12 points right here, holding our Alt key until we get to our radius one dimension. We're going to press our Control key and release our Alt key, and then drag out just a little bit to get those points. We'll hold our Shift key down to make it perfectly horizontal or vertical, and we'll release. Next thing we do is we're going to select our Direct Selection tool. Notice that what happens is we've got these anchors in play. All we need to do is click on any of the anchors, just drag them down, release, 
and we've got that wax droplet. We can also create things like thought bubbles using our star tool. Again, if I click and release our star tool, I'll change my points to 12 points once again. Delete my shape there. Press my Alt key. I'll click and drag until I get radius one to about the size I want. Then I'll release Alt and I'll press down on Control. I'll also press down my Shift key to make it horizontal or vertical until I got the points how I want them. That's about right right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my Direct Select tool. And I'm going to do something different now. I'm going to click off the document. Then I'm going to click and drag only over my outside points. I'll hold my Shift key to drag on multiple points. And I'll just select the outside points. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our bevel points and pull them in until I get them exactly how I want it. I'll click off of that, and that looks pretty good. If I want to, if I want to finish out my shape, I'll click and hold. I'll bring up my ellipses, and then I'll just add a couple more ellipses to give it that thought look. One more thing we can do is we can combine shapes with our geometric shape to get something a little bit more organic as well. In this case, let's make it like a cartoon conversation bubble. What we'll do is we'll click on, we'll click and make sure that our ellipse tool is selected. For this purpose, we're going to make it 150 points wide again by 100 points tall. And then we're going to grab our pen tool and we're just going to make a simple little triangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll do it just like that. We'll grab our select tool. We'll drag across both of our shapes. Then we will go to window, pathfinder, and with both selected, we'll select unite. We can grab our direct select tool if we want to move our bottom point and then just use our directional keys to get it exactly how we want. So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, subscribe, give me a like. I'd certainly appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you next time. See you.